Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com. And for this Reseller Friday, I wanna to talk to you about how more action, not less, will bring greater success. Now this statement should be fairly obvious, but there are so many people, and it's because it's one of those sayings that has gotten out there that is just, everybody knows, work smarter, and you don't have to tell them the rest of it, they can fill in the rest of it, not harder. It's a common saying that common people use because they aren't expecting exceptional results from their lives. And they aren't getting it, of course. It sounds wise on the surface. Of course, you don't want to work stupidly. You don't want to work inefficiently. You don't want to work in a foolish way and work harder for no reason. Of course. No one says out like, okay, let me see. I can do this two different ways. Which one's the hardest way to do it possibly? I'll do that way. That's better. No one does that. But what often happens is that the work smarter part really is a code word that most people use for being lazy. All they want to get to is the not harder part. They don't want to do hard work. So the excuse is the work smarter part because they're not even really working smarter. You should work intelligently, of course, but once you've narrowed down what you're doing and you got it efficient and effective, that's when you need to double up on the action, not pull back, not do less. When you can work in the most intelligent way possible to get that thing accomplished, that's when you need to work more. That's why I wrote a book called Work Smarter and Harder. Because this is a principle that many people have seemed to forgot over the years. Because they just accept that, oh, work smarter and harder. It's a cute saying, it sounds good. It sounds like it has some wisdom in it, and it's absolutely foolish because most people are using it as an excuse for doing less. In the reseller community, what is the way that people work smarter, not harder? Well, in sourcing, they will go and they'll buy some pallet of junk. And then they'll get it and they got all this stuff because they didn't want to go out and source anymore. That's too hard going to thrift stores. It's too hard going to those flea markets. It's too hard going to garage sales or whatever or wherever they were sourcing, this seems easier. I'm gonna work smarter, not harder. So then they get this pallet, and I've seen this happen over and over again. It happens, oh, now you can get good pallets of stuff, so don't misunderstand me. But so often, if you're buying a small little one pallet or two pallets, not a whole entire truckload, very often you're getting the junk that's left over from the people who buy the truckloads. They're getting the good stuff, you're getting leftover stuff. And I've seen so many people buy stuff and they're getting boxes and boxes of face masks that are worth nothing. They're getting boxes and boxes of just some private label junk from Amazon that the reason it's in a box and there's hundreds of this one item is because it didn't sell. Not because it's some great quality item. So maybe you could sell one or two of them on eBay or Amazon or somewhere. But the reality is you got about 99 left over that nobody's gonna ever buy ever in the history of the planet. That is the way people try to work smarter, not harder. When very often they make way more money just going out and doing the regular sourcing they were doing. Because now they got all this money tied up in a pallet and they think, well, I'm only paying 50 cents an item. Well, no, that's not true. Because if you have to throw away 400 items from it and there's only 500 items total your cost per good just went up dramatically most likely to a point where you never would have bought it in the first place if you knew you're going to be paying two dollars or three dollars or four dollars an item for the items you can actually sell the items that are left over that are actually sellable that somebody would actually buy that's where the real cost of goods comes in and that is what you need to divide by what you paid into how many you can actually sell to get your cost of goods. Now, there's another way that people use this smarter, not harder, which is really just their excuse for being lazier in the reselling business is they hire somebody. Now, of course, if you're growing and you've maxed out your effort, you need to hire somebody so you can continue to grow and expand and scale up. That's good. But what often happens is people are growing. They get to the point where they're pretty much maxed out and they hire somebody else. But instead of continuing 
the hard work they were doing, the diligent, smart, intelligent work they were doing, they stop. They got this employee to do it all for them now. They don't need to do it. They're above it or whatever they think. But the problem, obviously, in that, that they don't seem to see, is you had this little bit of income coming in when you were doing your all. Now you hired somebody else. That income is shrinking dramatically because you have to pay someone else and you haven't increased the effort going in to the business, the amount of input into the business. And so your output is not going to increase in the least. You're not going to get more sales. And it's very likely that new person, while they may be great, is not going to be doing as well as you. They might be performing at 20% of what you were able to do because you're an expert in your field. So your total input into the business is going to be going down, down, down. Your sales are going to be going down. And you now have a new expense in the employee to pay for lower sales. The whole thing is a disaster. And I've seen it happen so many times. And I've seen it wreck people's resale business where they have to lay people off. And then they're, they're barely able to get by. And they're struggling to get built back up to where they were before they hired the employee. I'm not telling you to avoid hiring employees. I'm telling you to be wise about it. If you do hire an employee, that's great. But don't you then stop working or start working way less. Continue your effort. Continue to increase. Continue to grow. Continue to scale up your business. Don't shrink back. Shrinking back is a disaster for businesses, and it happens so often in the reselling business because people get lazy. They're trying to find a shortcut, a super secret trick that nobody else knows. Let me get this inventory in a pallet form because then I'll get a whole bunch of inventory. I don't want to source anymore, but instead you get a bunch of junk. Oh, let me hire somebody because that way I don't have to work anymore. But then your sales go down, your expenses go up, and you're in a hole. In your business, your reselling business specifically, you need to be putting in more action, not less. Yes, you work smarter, but the smarter part is so you can figure out how to do more, not less. Obviously, if you can do the same amount of work in one hour, it took you four hours, that's intelligent and that's great and that's what you should be doing. But that doesn't mean you take that extra three hours that you would have been using in your business and go watch movies or play video games or scroll social media or do nothing. That should be poured into your business because now you have the ability to do four times the work. You can work for the same four hours, but now do four times the work. And that's what you should be doing. But sadly for many people in the reselling community, when they find a way of getting more productivity from their work, working shorter amount of time to get the same amount of work done, they just work a shorter amount of time and they don't scale up their business. They don't grow. They don't take more action. In that scenario I'm talking about where you figured out how to get the same amount of work done in one hour, it used to take you four hours. You could still just work three. You have an extra hour for whatever you want to do for your frivolity. And you'd still be getting three times the work done. So I'm not telling you got to work 24-7. But I do think most people should be working more. And most people are looking for easy ways out. They're looking for some way that seems smarter, but really it's just a lazier way. You need to dial in your processes and obviously get better and be able to perform at a higher level while taking less time to do the same activity. But that doesn't mean you need to shrink back. You need to be doing more. You need to be more effort, more intelligent work in your business so you can get to greater success. I say this often, but the reselling business is one of the easiest businesses in the world. You don't have to make the products. You don't have to do a bunch of research and development. You don't have to go get samples sent to you from some other country and approve it and get little tweaks done and all this stuff that goes into a real business. All you gotta do is go to a, a thrift store or go to a garage sale or go to your closet, find stuff that is valuable and resell it for a higher price than you paid so you make a profit it's easy and i know there's people out there telling you oh it's so hard because there's some some people have this scarcity mentality where they're afraid oh i might make a new reseller so i gotta talk them down and make sure they're afraid and think it's hard so i don't have any new competition there's plenty of inventory out there there are plenty of ways to make money reselling competition is not the problem because 
there are thousands of people each day that start reselling online and there are probably equal amounts of people who stop selling online because they are doing poorly because some of the things I mentioned, they start trying to take shortcuts and do it the easy way and start shrinking back, start doing less. If you want to be the greatest success in your reselling business, you need to be looking for ways to do more, ways to be more, ways to be that greater success by taking more action. Yes, your action is done intelligently, but the intelligent action is not to make an excuse for you to do less, it's to make room for you to do more. So my friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.